Here is another tiny two-story home video. All I did with this one was made it two foot wider. And the reason for that is so that I could make the upstairs bathroom a little bit larger and move the kitchen from over here to over here. And if we take a look at the modified floor plan, you can see here where I just have a sink and some cabinet space. You could do whatever you want. You could always leave the kitchen here or use this area and this area for a kitchen. And I went ahead and moved the refrigerator over to here to provide a little more room in the kitchen. And if we go upstairs, you can see where we kind of moved the door over so that we could make room for a larger bathroom or a bathroom that's going to have a bathtub in it. However, the bedroom is still quite small. And hopefully that makes sense as to why I made this house a little wider. And you can always make your home a little wider if you have some other plans for it or you need a little more room. Another thing you might consider doing will be increasing the height of the floor joist. And for those of you who watch my channel regularly, you probably know the next words that are going to be coming out of my mouth. But for those of you who do not, then you need to know that I am not a structural engineer and that the information in this video is only meant to provide you with a rough idea of how something like this can be assembled. And of course, even though the bedroom is quite small, it's still going to be two foot wider along with the rest of the upper floor plan. And I didn't do anything to the windows. I left them alone. And at the end of the video, there will be a link to a playlist that will include the other videos that I have made for this type of design, along with some of the additional stuff you might need to consider if you are going to build something like this. And keep in mind that the width of the building could create engineering problems. Your engineer might require you to install some type of a moment frame. And if that's the case, then you might consider making the building a little wider to eliminate the additional cost that could increase the cost of this project quite substantially. Our ceiling joists are 24 inches on center and we do have an attic access opening. I believe the building code requires an attic access if you have more than 26 inches of vertical attic space from the top of the ceiling joist to the highest part of the bottom of the roof framing. And that might be the distance between the top of the ceiling joist to the bottom of the roof ridge. And in our case here, we have about 28 inches. So you could always change the pitch of the roof to decrease this number and eliminate attic access. But you'll need to verify with your local building codes for that. And of course, don't forget to install your drywall backing so that you can nail the corner of the drywall in the areas where you don't have ceiling joist next to the wall framing. And even though I put the attic access in the bathroom, you can always relocate it. You can always put it in the bedroom. However, you're probably not going to want to put it in the stairwell because the individual trying to access the attic with a ladder could actually slip and fall all the way down to the bottom floor. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof rafters and our blocking. Our rafters are going to be 24 inches on center and connect to each one of the ceiling joists. And don't forget the rafters along with the ceiling joists can also be spaced 16 inches on center. And for a project like this, you're probably not going to spend that much more money to do that. Next up, let's go ahead and install our gable studs. And in this one here, I installed the gable studs flat. And to make this work pretty good, all you need to do is move the ceiling backing an inch and a half or the thickness of your gable studs away from the wall framing so that you could get some nice nailing. And I left room so that we could install a gable vent at each end instead of installing roof dormer vents. However, either one should work for this project as long as you get some ventilation in the attic. And of course, our fascia board not going to be too difficult to install this type of fascia board. And I didn't install any lookouts because I would think this would be able to span this far. But again, I'm not a structural engineer, so install the lookouts or additional barge rafter support there. And let's go ahead and start wrapping this video up with a few views of the roof sheathing. 
along with a couple of views of the building. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And if I can answer them, I will answer them. And thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to visit our website. We have an organized list of our videos there. You might have a difficult time finding that anywhere else.